BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Warning, this podcast contains all of the following. Three laddish lads having a good laugh and a glass of lager. An embarrassingly juvenile raucous guff for... What's it called? Guff... Guffawing? I've never even seen that word before. Guffawing. Not a clue. It does not contain a special guest or any redeeming moments. <laughs> That's probably a fair summary, Chris, isn't it? Yeah, he's got it bang on, to be fair. The pod's just got off to absolute shambolic start again. No, actually, actually, actually. You're a pervert. No, I'm not a pervert. You are a pervert. No, you're a pervert. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maths is void now, isn't it, really? There's no sound in space. I'm not disrespecting the Pope. I can't get into the ladies. Why don't you just go in as Chris and come out as Christoph? What is smell? I'm not Attenborough, do you know what I mean? <laughs> this podcast is Perfect. the biggest con on the BBC. <laughs> We're having it off here. Welcome to another episode of That Peter Crouch Podcast with me, Peter Crouch. It's a bit different this week, but Chris and Tom are still with me. You right, boys? This is weird, Chris. This is officially weird. I can see you both, but you're not in the same room as me. We haven't got beige food in front of us. We haven't got our usual pints. I like to think that this is a bit of an experiment, though. Not for the you know, long-term future. Uh, but we could occasionally do this. We've got to see how these things can, can work and can play out in these quite ridiculous times. Um, but yeah, it's very odd being on a FaceTime call. Do you do many of these, Crouchy? Because right now I can see you. Is it's, it And is it weird doing one of these whilst wearing clothes? I feel a little bit like Dirty Den, if I'm honest. I don't know. It is a bit finger in mouth, isn't it? So Chris, all I can see with you is you're wearing a black Watford, very nice old school Adidas Watford top. Crouchy, you've got something very special behind you that I can see. I'm glad you noticed, actually. Uh, this is the famous tree. I thought I'd sit just in front of it. I mean, it's it's stunning. It looks great, yeah. Cl- Clancy's bush there behind you. It's all lovely pink and white. <laughs> it was always going to be a nice bush, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think what's important about this podcast, though, is we wanted to get something out there. And um, actually, this podcast, in a weird kind of way, as you're, as you're going to hear, is almost a bit of an apology. Weren't we supposed to have a big guest this week? Yeah, what's happened with that, Chris? Yes. So did you completely mess that up? Yes. Well, no. <laughs> Listen, I'm not the one that's started this virus, right? So I can't be held accountable for what's happened. Um, but obviously, because of all this coronavirus stuff, um, the guest that I did have lined up and you boys know about by the way yeah i mean i'm I'm just gutted that it's not going ahead it's just it would have been awesome wouldn't it now look at us (laughs) yeah (laughs) was it definitely going to happen chris because you gave us the name and look to be honest with you we were blown away i'm just wondering whether it was ever a reality yeah of course of course it is and at some point um, our guest will be on this podcast. I'm convinced of it. I, I'm, it's definitely going to happen, yeah? I wouldn't swear my life on it, um, but, you, you know, I'd be, I'd, I'd heavy pencil it. What's a heavy pencil? Well, they were keen to come on, weren't they? Really keen to come on. So if they're that keen, it's not going to... It's not going to not happen, is Yeah, it? and as everyone knows who listens to this podcast, we do like a mystery. Um, there's obviously one ongoing at the moment involving a certain parched. Uh, but yeah, the guest situation this week, I did promise and I have promised for a couple of weeks now that I've been working on something special. And I hope, if you're listening to this right now, that you can accept my apologies for that not being the case. It is my fault and the fault of the coronavirus. That was almost like a politician's Apology, wasn't it? It was quite good. It was a very good speech. <laughs> He's actually said nothing whilst talking a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, what have you guys been up to this week, though? Let's have a little catch up, Crouchy. What have you been? Um, well, obviously we're in lockdown a little bit, so I've I've, I've done a few bits and pieces, but I've I've found time to to get doing a bit of scampy research. Have yeah. Yeah, because obviously we've been we've all been it's sort of blowing my mind really this scampy stuff. Um, what is it? A few people on email and social have told me that scampi is actually langoustine tails. Mm-hmm. What's langoustine? I've no idea. <laughs> I believe it's some sort of crappier lobster, is it? <laughs> like an Aldi or little lobster? Yeah. I mean, that's my take on that. Everyone keeps firing away that this is a lobster or a longoustine and that kind of thing, but they're very expensive fish, aren't they? So how are they getting away with scampi being so cheap? And then if it is that cheap, why aren't we just whacking a load of lobster and breadcrumbs and that being a thing? Yeah, but yeah, like you say, lobster's expensive, isn't it? I mean, langoustine, is it, is it just a bit of a shit of lobster? It's like a little tiddly yeah. one, isn't it? And it's only the tail of it. You're not eating the body of it. So maybe, maybe it's almost like the offcuts. I found something else 
interesting that a singular scampi is a scampo. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a great fact. It's a scampo. Yeah, I know. So I do you know what? That's the fact of the day, and <laughs> we always want to teach something with the podcast. You know, one little bit of. Uh, I wouldn't say useless bit of information, one relatively useful bit of information. That's it, isn't it? I was thinking this, you know, like obviously with this, the self-isolation and everyone has to you know, be at home and no one's working. I feel like it's a time to sort of get good at something, like learn a language or read books or things like that. I was outside the, um, in the garden yesterday when I basically wanted just to get out of the house. And I was just working on my golf ch- chipping. <laughs> If everyone around the country works on a skill, we could emerge from this as a better nation. Mm. Yeah, we could we could all have a skill. You know, like I could just go and like try carpentry, mm. carpentry. and like try and try and build a wardrobe or something. <laughs> we came out of this with something. Let's do it. What are the let's, odds? Let's let's do this because everyone can message in suggesting a skill that Crouchy should do. You've got the time on your hands, and we'll fo- we'll follow you as you do it. Well, like in this in this isolation podcast, like um, I've worked out that I've gonna kill Ab. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so Peter had me making batches of homemade soup for about a week, <laughs> not letting me out the kitchen. You do love a soup though, Crouchy, don't you? Yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of the soup and Ab's been, uh, she's been preparing them and putting and them in tubware. A, a homemade apple pie yesterday, oh. covered with hearts because obviously, you know, he's really annoying me being at home all the time so I thought I'll give him a nice cake and he didn't even have one slice when I asked him did he want one he said no because he was having a massage what do, what do you mean you had a massage well, I had a, I had a massage oh. what, what an actual like, sporty one or a massage massage well it's like a sporty one isn't it What's... yeah he's got a sore back from all the golf <laughs> <laughs> well, from all the all the chipping practice in the back garden he's got a sore back I honestly like my isolation process has been been rather pleasant like i've had I have, I have kids days and then i have golf days and then i do kids days and then golf days um so i i'm coping quite well really uh so i had a, a massage for the for the bad back okay bye guys see you later, see you later. do we need ab to rinse me anymore or, it's always um, good no he's all good a, he's getting a facial tonight <laughs> oh yeah and a, a, a mani pedi oh what a laddish lad <laughs> i'm not by the way <laughs> message from ollie we've solved who parched is it's got to be scott parker all the clues are there he's clearly a little try hard when you say he's a bit try hard or or ollie says he's a bit try hard the thing that everyone remembers about scott parker is probably less what he did as a professional footballer and more what he did as a kid in that mcdonald's advert do you remember that mm, yeah, it was yeah amazing jimmy we're off to mcdonald's yeah he was the, you know, he was actually, he was the main man when we were kids. Everyone was talking about the McDonald's boy, as he was known then. He changed his game. He was quite silky and, and he was always the standout player. And then he changed his game completely and he was sort of a combative midfield player, wasn't he? And um, really good player. But I think this, where he gets tagged with the parched thing, I think, he's obviously he's gone into management straight. He's a young manager. And as a player, he was a coach's dream, manager's dream. And he was always sort of that link between the players and the, and the management as well. Spoke well. Um, everyone respected him, captain. So I can see why the parched links come about. I can see it. Classic parched behaviour, that, isn't it? It is. But I don't, I'm going to rule him out. I'm going to say Scott Parker is not parched. Wow. wow. He's gone. It really is turning into to one of those mysteries you know those dramas that ru- rumble on and on? Who is parched? It's big. And I would argue in these kind of times, even bigger, because people are really getting on with these. Um, they need entertaining with this kind of thing, don't they? I spoke to Parched recently. He actually called me. Do you know he didn't know he was parched? Wow. <laughs> but I was just assumed that he knew, but obviously not. Anyway, so I've come clean, told him everything. Um, he just asked me, what, what is this parched stuff that everyone keeps asking me about? And I said, oh, I've got some good and bad news. Um, your parts. <laughs> I don't know if there's any good news in it. Anyway, he, was, he took it great. Well, I suppose the good news is, I uh, assume he, he's as intrigued as we all are as to who's parched. So he found out parched. Yeah, good news. He knows. Bad he knows. news is, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was chatting to him and I said, look, I want to do a big reveal. Are you up for it? And... Uh, and he said, yeah. Do you remember when Santi Cazorla yes. was uh, signed for 
Uh, yeah, I think I think along those lines, you know, <laughs> if we can get him in in a tank with a load of smoke, <laughs> yeah, and just like the smoke fades and parched appears. <laughs> Maybe we throw this out there now that there isn't much football going on. We can all get together to work out who parched is. Maybe we, we throw out a few clues here or there on socials and stuff like that. I'm going to get a team together, a team of people that will solve who's who parched is we'll get to the bottom of it could we could we get him saying a few clues and things like that but like with those with the voice that's muffled like a robot voice get him to reveal a few clues and um perhaps muffle his voice a touch yeah, yeah. great the, great make his voice they always make the voices a bit deeper don't they they make it make them sound a little bit alien i i played under manager we could do like a through the keyhole at his place yes we could maybe we could maybe fill through the keyhole. <laughs> <laughs> could we bring Lloyd Grossman back? Grossman knocks out his pasta sauces, doesn't he? Ah, uh, he does. Doesn't yeah, he? yeah. Has he given up? He given well, up? Well, is all he that? is he yeah. alive? Is he Grossman? Yeah, is he definitely? I assume so. I think he is. He was. He he did MasterChef, didn't he? He was the first presenter of MasterChef. Do you remember his voice? It was the whole. Who, who oh, would live in a house like this? Who lives in a house? Like this. <laughs> Let's go through the keyhole. Who lives in a house like this? <laughs> I guess the appeal is if you can get hold of Lloyd Grossman, um, I don't know if he's on social media, maybe you can go hassle him there. It would be amazing to get him for the parched reveal or something, wouldn't it? Who would be parched like this? We could do something along those lines. It would be, <laughs> be phenomenal. Um, Who is parched like would parched live in a house like this? <laughs> um, Crouch, you know your email address, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's Peter Crouch. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do know it. I'm making it up. It's Peter Crouch at BBC UK. <laughs> we should talk about what you heard at the start of this podcast episode as well. It was us laying out exactly what you can expect in our podcast because we have been reviewed on BBC Radio 4 and it's one of our favourite things we've we've ever heard. We need to talk about it. We need to share this with everyone listening in case anyone hasn't heard this. Now, because there's not that many people in the BBC building right now, I'm here, I'm, I'm one of the only ones, uh, I've managed to get into a Radio 4 studio and I've got the whole recording. I mean, we've, we've had some great reviews, haven't we, in our time, but this is just something else. Here's how it starts. It's said to be one of the most popular BBC podcasts, which, and it claims, 12 million downloads. Positive. I mean, I think they're, they're only reviewing it because it seems to have been quite big. Yeah. So they, they, they're actually gutted reviewing it, Listen, aren't they? they hate us. What you need to remember when you hear all these clips, they despise us. That intro, although it sounds positive, actually what they're saying there is almost like, we claim to have 20 million downloads or whatever it is. Uh, you know, it's said by others that it's one of the biggest podcasts on the BBC. It's like they're already a little bit snooty at the start. Chris, have you got that bit where they describe the three of us? Yeah, this is amazing. Here you go. Well, the podcast is essentially three very laddish lads having a good laugh over a curry and a glass of lager. Its audience is largely under 35-year-olds who are likely to listen to Radio 5. I'm a typical Radio 4 listener, and I thought the podcast was dreadful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's going downhill now, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> why is it they enjoy a curry and a glass of lager? <laughs> what lads... Imagine ordering a glass of lager while you were having a curry. Oh. Can you, can you give me a glass of lager? You what? <laughs> Excuse me? A, do you mean a pint or a, or a bottle? No, I just want a glass of lager. I think they've been told to review it. and they're, they're, they're just not, they're not, It's not their cup of tea, is it? That is fine, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. They're, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter that not everyone likes this podcast. The main punchline for me was when he talks about sausages up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the best bit. I cannot believe this was on Radio 4. It advertised itself as saying there'd be strong language and adult humour. As far as I could see, the strong language was the use of the F word and the word bitch, which they use quite a lot. And the humour were included, how many sausages can you put up? I better not say which part of your anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I like to think that it was someone who loves the podcast, or one of the ambassadors out there, is producing this show because why are they reviewing these bits of it like why why are they talking about sausages up the hoop it's crazy like the thing is they've gone for um obviously that i mean it was it sounds vulgar when it's taken out of context but 
you know, we were talking about... Guinness World Records. Guinness World <laughs> Records. And, <laughs> I, I, who was it who mentioned it? Chris, I yeah. think. It's just a gag, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yeah, and we should say at this point, use of the word bitches as we were using it was in the correct context, actually. So piss off well that's what i'm saying so like he said he said we used the word bitches we were talking about crofts <laughs> yeah we were talking about the female the female dog <laughs> it wasn't all bad news though listen to this what about the role of the uh, two companions what do you think their job was that's a very good question because i mean i love chris stark i think he's a brilliant foil to uh, scott mills and tom for dice i mean they're, they're serious journalists i i think they were aiming to be bromance rather than sycophantic the thing is you are you are a serious journalist, but every serious journalist is allowed to have a light relief in the form of a podcast. So, you know, Chris Stark is, you know, a well-spoken young man, as I'd like to think that I can be as well. But we like to gather together as lads over a glass of lager <laughs> and perhaps talk about sausages up our arse sometimes. <laughs> and I think our downloads reflect the fact that people also enjoy doing that <laughs> so piss off radio 4 <laughs> <laughs> odds on them listening to another one do you think uh i don't think the odds are great um this is how they finished would you listen to the podcast again please don't make me listen to it again i, I was worried that it might last an hour to be honest I was so grateful when it finished after 30 minutes and i would rather not listen to it again thank you <laughs> <laughs> you got to love them, and you. Quick last message before we go. Thanks to everyone who's got in touch about the inaugural Crouch Cup. Now, as you can imagine, our plans for that have had to be changed at the minute, but we will definitely get Crouchy onto a five-a-side pitch as soon as possible. We will make it happen. Well, that's it, really. This is our first ever isolation episode. Um, <laughs> how do we think it went? I mean, as I said earlier, I'd like to think that next time, let's just, let's just get a few beers, um, maybe do mm. this again. Um, but but we're sort of there or thereabouts, isn't it? I'd say this is probably our worst podcast yet. <laughs> yeah, you sound like Radio Four now. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way for us to finish this, boys, and you know maybe we speak for everyone at the moment, and that is um, that we and everyone else will be the nation will be back stronger. Believe it. That Peter Crouch podcast from BBC Five Live. So we're not sure exactly when we will be back, but hopefully it won't be too long. I've been notified of another BBC podcast trying to muscle in. It is about football, though, so we might give it a go. That's right, Tom. Match of the Day are launching their new pod with Gary Lineker, Ian Wright and Alan Shearer. And on each episode, they're going to debate a top 10. So they've got episodes like the top 10 finishers, uh, top 10 best goalies, top 10 captains, that kind of thing. And I'm told it gets pretty heated. Uh, as heated as me and you arguing about Ben Foster. Yeah. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Crouch, are you going to get into the top 10 finishers, do you think? Pull a few favours with, no. with your new mates? I'd like to think so, but I highly doubt it. <laughs> so there it is. It'll be available really soon. Just search for Match of the Day. Top 10 available exclusively on BBC Sounds. And we will see you later. Radio Podcasts.